Hello, I'm Tom Kelly, captain of Inland Seas, and for the next few minutes here, we're going to review some of the different kinds of life jackets and how they work and what they're used for. There's five different types, uh, one through five, and we're going to start here with type one, which is the uh, commercial or offshore type vest. They usually have um, about 35 pounds of flotation, and they work like this, over your head. Ones we have on Inland Seas just have one strap and they buckle up like that. The um, This particular kind is what's called an extended size. It's good for adults and young people down to uh, 47 inches tall. So anybody that's larger than that can wear this type of jacket. For smaller kids we have a, um, a child's version of the same thing here. And you can see they have the reflective patches here on them, and there's also a light for nighttime use. So that's the Type 1. These are the kind we have on board Inland Seas, and any commercial vessel would have a Type 1 jackets. And they are, they're the best for offshore, and if you have to abandon ship, this is what you want to have on. We're going to go now to uh, Type 2, which is usually the kind that's found on recreational vessels. Um, they're very inexpensive, um, and uh, the, um, the one advantage of the, the Type 1 and the Type 2 is in most conditions they will rotate a person, even unconscious, with their head up and uh, supported by part of the jacket here. This is a child size, um, but the, uh, the Type 1 is much better at this, but the Type 2 is a little smaller, uh, easier to, to uh, keep on board your vessel and like I say, very expensive. But um, I generally would recommend uh, having a set of Type 1s on board your vessel for anybody uh, that would need it. Um, type 3s are usually look like this. They're very uh, comfortable to wear and uh, the, that's the main advantage of them. They um, Some of them have buckles and some of them zip up. This one's not going to zip up on me because it's got to be adjusted, but uh, this, they adjust on the side here. The Type 3s um, do not have the amount of flotation generally that the 1s or 2s have, so this is really for somebody who is uh, conscious and able to swim, but will help them stay afloat. So it does provide uh, some flotation for you, it will keep you afloat, but it will not keep your head out of the water or keep your face out of the water if you're unconscious like the ones and twos will. So, but the main advantage again of the Type 3 is because it's comfortable to wear. This is generally what people want to wear, not, not these other ones. So that's the Type 3. These are not um, permitted as equipment on board commercial vessels, so you won't see these on board inland seas, uh, but they are in general use uh, with most people on recreational vessels. We're going to look at the Type 4s which are uh, throwable devices. Yeah, I have two different kinds here. This is uh, one of our life rings on inland seas. And uh, of course this is for, for throwing to somebody in the water. It has 60 feet of floating line on it. And if the boat is stopped, you can hang on to the end of the line and throw this to somebody. But if the boat is underway, you would want to throw the line and the ring overboard. Because if you're holding on to the end of the line or if this was attached to the boat, and the boat is still moving, um, it would pull the ring away from the person in the water. So the best thing to do is just heave the whole thing. And another Type 4, uh, which is common on recreational vessels but not used on commercial vessels, uh, is this uh, seat cushion, which has flotation in it. And it is made to uh, throw to somebody in the water. Keep, it'll help you keep afloat until you get rescued. Uh, it's not meant, though, to wear, and some people um, mistakenly will put this on their back and put their arms through the straps and that is uh, not good because in the water that would actually rotate your face down into the water so if you're in the water with one of these things you want to hold on to it like this okay so it's in front of you and that will help keep your face up again common on recreational vessels but not used on let see now we're going to look at some type fives which are special specialty devices um, this is our work vest. We have a bunch of these on board for the crew to use. And uh, they're similar 
to a Type 3, but they're made only for working in and uh, not, not to be worn by passengers. And it works like this. So that's our Type 5 work vest. Again, it has the reflective tapes and the lights on it. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is a Type 5 flotation jacket, which is basically it looks like a regular jacket, but it's full of flotation. And if you went in the water with this, it would keep you afloat. Similar to a Type 3, but because it would not necessarily rotate your head up out of the water, but it'll help you swim and keep you afloat until you can get rescued. And it also provides some protection against hypothermia. The next step up from the jacket is a it's what they call an exposure work suit, which is similar to the jacket, but it has legs on it. And so basically get into this by unzipping it here. And just stepping into it like you would a pair of coveralls. And it provides plenty of flotation and also keeps you warm in the water. So this would, uh, this would really extend your survival time in cold water uh, by wearing this survival work, work suit here. Again, it's not a survival suit, which I'll show you here in just a minute, but they call this an exposure work suit. And it'll keep you warm and afloat. Water will get into that, but the water will warm up similar to a wetsuit. And, uh, and now we're gonna look at a, uh, another type of Type 5 this is an inflatable vest. This particular one has a harness that's integral with it. So we usually wear these at night or in rough weather conditions. And they hook up like this. This, this snap here connects the two parts. And if you're looking at uh, a harness, you want to make sure this is the, the best type of snaps here. It has a short and a long tether to hook onto the side of the boat, like so. And then it also has a, a release on it. So if you were, if this was under tension, like you were being pulled through the water, if you'd fallen in, you could pull this and that would release the uh, harness from the jacket. So, okay, so on uh, this vest, as in many like this, uh, there's a little tab here on the bottom. You pull that down and it would inflate the jacket and it would be about this big and provide quite a lot of flotation for you. So, And some of these are equipped so that if you fall in the water, if you were unconscious, they would inflate automatically. This particular one is not like that. It's a manual inflation. But you can buy either type depending on, on what you are. So that's a Type 5 inflatable vest with a harness. And now we're going to look at sort of the ultimate in survival gear we're abandoning ship. This is a exposure suit or survival suit, sometimes called a Gumby suit because that's kind of what you look like when you have it on. And uh, you get to shake it down and it comes out. And it's neoprene, similar to what a wetsuit would be made out of. And it looks like this. You can see it has a sort of a mitten type uh, glove that's built into it. And also booties that are integral with the survival suit. So you would not probably wear your shoes with this, but you would want to have your clo regular clothing on underneath to help keep you warm. And uh, so you get in basically and then just zip yourself up. And this will keep you afloat and also dry and warm because unlike the, the uh, work vest, which will actually get water coming into it, this will keep you dry. So this is really a good thing to have on board if you're cruising in cold water. Those are the uh, different types of life jackets and uh, we'll review these on the vessel 